Well, folks, Metal Gear Solid is officially back from the dead. I never thought I'd see the day. To bring this legendary franchise back into the mainstream, we've been given the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1, which is now available on PlayStation 4 and 5, the Xbox Series consoles, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam. This is a really exciting time to be a Metal Gear fan, because like I said, it's been deader than dead for years now, and it's now back with a huge celebration of its legacy, and soon we'll have the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. To cut to the chase, I'm here to give my thoughts after sampling the collection for a few hours, and let the people know if I think the collection's worth buying, and if it's a definitive version, and for those who don't know what Metal Gear is, what's in the collection. I mean, who better to tell you if this collection has the goods or not besides me, a former Metal Gear fanatic? I own and have played pretty much all the ports of these games, and that's no joke. Well, there are probably numerous fans who could do a detailed dive into the collection that would be far better than anything I could come up with, but that's besides the point, let's get into it. Regardless of how many vague remarks I keep making in my videos but being a retired or former fan of Metal Gear, I have to admit I was pretty excited about this and pre-ordered it on PC as soon as I had the chance. The Master Collection has provided the world with what I and countless fans had been asking for for years. A nice way to play the main series and current consoles, and most importantly, on PC. The last major re-releases of the MGS games were on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, which was forever ago, and then MGS1 wasn't even on the HD collection, so Xbox players didn't have it, and so on and so forth. Metal Gear Solid's 1 and 2 got old PC ports that were on GOG.com, but nothing beats modernized ports built for current day machines. So now that we have a current day collection, what does it offer? To waste no time, the first draw of the collection is Metal Gear Solid, the PlayStation classic from 1998. This was how most fans were introduced to the franchise, and despite my not having played it until 2016, it was also my first foray into the Metal Gear franchise. The Master Collection features an emulated version of Metal Gear Solid exactly as it was originally released. It's not a remaster of that game. But you don't just get MGS. Following the game's original release, it got an expanded version in Japan called Metal Gear Solid Integral, which contains some new features exclusive to this version. This is included as an option as well. One of the things included in Integral was a mode where you got a plethora of VR simulated challenge missions. These challenge missions were released in America separately as Metal Gear Solid VR missions, and in Europe as special missions. All of these are included, though you have to download special missions and Integral as free DLC that's accessible from the MGS1 menu. Or at least, that's what I would say, but when being taken from the option in the menu for it, I have no idea what you're supposed to do to find the DLC on the Steam page, and others are having this issue too. So your mileage may vary here. If you've never played Metal Gear Solid before, some things about it are going to feel dated from the combat mechanics to the controls and the pacing, but it's definitely far more than playable and worth experiencing. Now, as for the quality of the emulation, that's a separate matter. From the moment I saw this collection and saw MGS1 footage, I was pretty worried. MGS1 was a 240p PlayStation 1 game, and when upscaling that game, I'd prefer a sharp pixeled integer scaled image. Since I play at 4K, the PS1's 240p would be an even 9 times scale if played at 4K which is the footage you're seeing on the screen right now that was recorded on an emulator. This is how the game could look, but it's not the product we got in the collection. Instead, the dev team went for a bilinear filtered upscale that gets you this really soft image that's obviously super pixelated, but appears really blurry on the screen. The text on the subtitles in the UI just looks really unappealing, if you ask me. I was hoping that maybe, like the Mega Man collections, there would be options for a sharper appearance, but unfortunately that's not the case. You get the option for borders if you want the black space filled in, and you can align the image in the center, right, and left of the screen, which would perhaps be useful if you're a live streamer, but no other visual options are here. I'm not saying it's unplayable. I am just saying that for MGS1 at least, I won't be playing the Master Collection version because the game isn't displayed to my tastes. Though, credit to the dev team, they did include the option where you can select what Konami titles are on your memory card. That way, Psycho Mantis can read that and say it to you during the boss fight, which is a really nice touch and a really good way to bring that iconic feature back into the game. Next up is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. For both this and MGS3, they are directly recycled from the HD editions released in 2011. Some might find that disappointing, as while many consider those to be the definitive versions of the games, based on the re-releases both titles got in the 2000s with extra content, however, in that HD version, some of that content was left on the cutting room floor. For MGS2, the Substance release on PlayStation 2 contained this skating minigame that was meant to promote Konami's Tony Hawk ripoff that was never included in the HD version, and the HD version also created this weird pause bug where the codec would take longer to load than it was supposed to. But I feel like that's a minor grievance, and I think, let's be real, the skating minigame isn't that important. It was done for promotion's sake, something the Metal Gear series is no stranger to. I mean, maybe it's good, but since I'm not good at this sort of game at all, I guess it makes it easier for me to see why they didn't bother. 
In my opinion, what matters is that you have the full campaign starring Snake in the Tanker chapter and Raiden in the Big Shell chapter fully included, and with all the other bonuses that the Substance version added, like the Snake Tales minigame where you play extra missions as Solid Snake and the full roster of VR challenges. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater is also here based on the HD version, like I said. That is based on the 2006 Subsistence version, not the original PS2 release. The biggest difference between them was that Subsistence added a fully controlled third-person camera which really changed the dynamic of the game from the original fixed camera release, but you can still switch to that fixed camera with a click of the right analog stick. Other content from Subsistence on PS2 was sadly left out of the HD edition, like the online multiplayer, the Snake vs. Monkey crossover with Ape Escape, which is probably just not worth the licensing Konami would have to do to use it, and the boss replay mode. But you've got the entirety of Naked Snake's mission in Cold War Russia fully included, which matters the most. Even including some fixes to graphical problems that the original HD release had, such as this issue with the cutscene introducing the end boss fight that I found on Twitter. Some might have liked to see the 3DS version of MGS3 get some love, as it included new models and gameplay mechanics from Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, but it was trapped on the 3DS with a low resolution and cumbersome controls. But hey, maybe they'll do it someday, but I'm just glad we have the original. The only drawback that I think arises from the Master Collection taking MGS2 and 3 from the 2011 editions is that they didn't enhance the resolution at all. They posted a handy performance chart on social media in the lead up to the collection's release. For MGS1, I don't really mind that it's 1080-30 because it's an emulation of a PlayStation game, so I can give it a pass on that. The soft video output was the problem for me. For MGS2 and 3, I think they'd stand to look a lot sharper in 4K than keeping them at 1080p. Sure, you could say they're PS2 games, but I think it would look nicer on modern displays if it was 4K especially with the subtitles and UI. And the PS5 can certainly do that because the games are 20 years old. Most bafflingly, the PC version caps it at 1080p. The games themselves are, from what I read, an up-res of 720p, which sucks because I have 4K monitors and want to put them to use. But most bizarre of all is that the launcher for each game runs at the resolution of your monitor, but then MGS 1, 2, 3, and the MSX games all force the monitor to 1080p, which causes the screen to go black and cause other annoyances on my computer. Besides the resolution, the actual games are another matter. When playing MGS 2 and 3, I thought they worked great. The performance was stable, and something about it just felt smoother than ever while playing from moving the stick during regular gameplay or when aiming, giving me more precision than I felt I had when I was sampling it on PS3 the other day. Though, those controllers have seen their time in the sun, let's say, so I might be totally wrong about that. Either way, I felt like I still had some of the skills left over from the old days while playing. Freeze. <gasps> Speaking of controllers, I'd make sure you're using one as I'm reading reports of the keyboard and mouse controls not being good. But then, sound was a problem I was noticing, at least on PC. In MGS2, I noticed that the crawling sound of these vents was off. And then the speech from Scott Dolph kept changing in volume as I snuck through the vents, which I don't remember being like that before. Then the codec didn't sound right either. MGS3 was much worse off in the sound department because the game was super loud, like volume in the red loud. Just take a listen. That's nothing that lowering the volume wouldn't fix, but it was something I noticed right off the bat. Then a weird thing happened when I'd quickly unequip and re-equip the Trank gun. Snake was in his running shooting stance, which is not how it's supposed to work. I would know. It was a go-to strat for me back when I used to play this religiously. But to stick to the subject of performance, I have to mention that Switch players are totally getting screwed here. The portability is a plus, but MGS 2 and 3 both run at 30 FPS on Switch at 720p, which is frankly a joke. 20-year-old PlayStation 2 games running at 72030 on 2017 hardware that can do a game like Mario Odyssey at 60 FPS. MGS 2 was 60 FPS on the PlayStation 2. MGS3 was not, but that's beside the point. But if you want the games on the go, this is your option, unless you have a Steam Deck, I suppose, which I do not. But as Liquid Snake once said, it's not over yet, because the collection's main draw might be MGS1, 2, and 3, but the content for Volume 1 doesn't stop there. They definitely did a really good job going all out with the bonus content. Not only do you get the first three solid games, but you also get Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake for the MSX2. These were the first two games in the series, released in 1987 and 1990 respectively, and were Japanese exclusive. The subsistence version of MGS3 included fully translated versions of these games with some enhancements over their original releases, like Metal Gear 1 telling you when you maxed out on collectible ammo and rations, for example. 
The HD version of MGS3 also included Metal Gear 1 and 2 as an option in the menu, but then the Master Collection is, for the first time, giving these games the respect they deserve by giving them their own launchable and menu. The first Metal Gear is a game that I think is pretty underrated. I've always enjoyed playing it, and I've played it five times now in the last several years. It's certainly janky, but I think it can be a simple and satisfying adventure game, provided you have a map or something like that. The second game was an all-around improvement and a huge blueprint for the first Metal Gear Solid, though I don't tend to replay it. In fact, I haven't played it all the way through since I reviewed it in 2016. But in terms of how these games are handled, they were also pulled from the HD collection. But it just cuts past the part where you have to select them from the MGS3 menu. These games, because they are pulled from the collection, are perfectly integer scaled and display sharp pixels since it's just reusing work that was already done. Making this the best version of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, if you ask me. Just make sure that if you get these, do it by buying the complete Volume 1 bundle, which was just $60. You can get the MSX collection and MGS 1, 2, and 3 for 20 bucks each, which is definitely overpriced for these two games in particular, so getting them in the bundle is much cheaper. But I mentioned that the original Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 were Japanese only. The first Metal Gear did receive a version in the West for the Nintendo Entertainment System, but calling it a port of the original Metal Gear is generous if you ask me, because I think this version's a total botch job changing a lot of things from the original game and was far more frustrating to play than the original. I tend to consider the NES Metal Gear as its own game entirely. The NES Metal Gear got an exclusive sequel for that platform called Snake's Revenge, which is a game I've never survived more than an hour of because it's really difficult and I don't want to play it. Maybe someday I'll complete the NES Metal Gear games, but they were never canon to the actual story of the series, so I safely just never bothered. Though I do own cartridges of them if anyone cared to know. I bring all that up because on the collection's extras menu you can play the NES Metal Gear and Snake's Revenge. I certainly don't plan on it, but they are there. But here's where things get interesting though. The launcher for the bonus content doesn't take you to a separate executable like all the main games I've discussed thus far. You go straight into MGNES and Snake's Revenge. I don't think you can back out of the games without restarting the game, but still, that was pretty interesting. Which means the games were being emulated at 4K because my monitors didn't have to refresh. But since it was a new emulation, I thought to check to see if my arch nemesis, Poorly Scaled Pixels, was here, and I was correct. You can clearly see uneven pixels on the ground when playing Snake's Revenge here, but I can already hear the comments saying it's a nitpick, and for once, I agree. I mean, I'd rather fight the tide than play these games, but I figured I'd just mention that and move on. But I'm still not done with the extras here. Also included are the digital graphic novels of MGS1 and 2 from the mid-2000s. These featured pretty much all the voice actors from the original games doing the story again in a 90 minute digital graphic novel for each game, allowing them to include extra scenes the games didn't bother with since there was a need for gameplay. And then these versions of the stories don't feature 20 minute exposition dumps because that would kill the pace of the story, perhaps making these versions more digestible as ways to revisit the plots of MGS 1 and 2. The bonus content section also has this digital soundtrack which only contains select tracks from MG 1, 2, and the first three solid games, and some new covers of The Best Is Yet To Come, Can't Say Goodbye to Yesterday, and Snake Eater, which is nice. I would say I'd rather they included the full soundtracks, but it doesn't really matter. I'd rather just listen to them on YouTube anyway, even if they were fully included here. I regularly listen to the soundtracks of the Metal Gear games as background noise because they're some of the most atmospheric and impactful tracks in gaming history, if you ask me. The last thing I'll discuss in terms of the package is that each of the main games includes this master book that contains the history of the Metal Gear series in its entirety, and also breakdowns of each individual game and explanations of the plot, like showing that the big boss killed in MG1 was actually Venom Snake from Metal Gear Solid 5 for all the sense that ended up making. And you can also access the screenplays of each title, even the 8-bit ones. But with that said, I've gone over the entire collection. So what do I think of it? And should a new fan give it a whirl? Well, like any normal writer, I'm gonna start with the second question I just asked myself. If you've never tried Metal Gear and have always wanted to, I think this is a good option. I mean, you'd be supporting the revival of a dormant IP, in time for the 25th anniversary of MGS1 in fact, and for $60 you're getting 7 games. Five of which are, in my opinion, some of the most influential stealth action, or really just games ever made. Why not play it? If you're a fan of MGS and want to play the games again, it's not the best option, but if you aren't into the emulation scene or don't have the old consoles anymore, I think it's more than playable. If you're a lapsed fanboy like me, you'll probably just play other emulations of MGS1 over this. But if fixes for the other games on PC are found, I'd say this is definitely how I'll be going back to MGS 2 and 3 if I ever feel the need. But still, I think this is good enough, but perhaps costs too much. Re-releasing 3D games is going to create a lot of problems that wouldn't be there when doing 2D games like Konami has been doing for their other franchises, so I get things not being perfect, but given the stuff that emulators can do, you'd kind of hope the $60 package could offer some level of competition for it. You'd hope this kind of re-release would be a slam dunk for Konami, but instead, it's been really controversial amongst fans. Some serious issues being reported like input lag for MGS1. I think it's a nice, convenient package for new and old fans, but you wish it would have been better nevertheless. 
But regardless of all that, I'm still really excited to see what can come next of the Master Collection since this is only Volume 1. I mean, think of the possibilities. Obviously, Peace Walker is going to be a part of it, but could we get a Metal Gear Ghost Babel emulation? A 60 FPS remaster of Portable Ops? The Metal Gear Acid games? The Twin Snakes remake of MGS1? Or heaven forbid, MGS4 finally freed from its PlayStation 3 prison? But whatever it is, I'll be there to play it and maybe even talk about it. But that's just about all there is for this video. So with that said, I'll wrap up by saying what I always do. You've seen everything. Go outside. <laughs>